founder of the Maison Blanche Paint Company, and today I'm going to show you two very basic glazing techniques using a product called Translucide. The two techniques I'm going to show you are brushed glaze and blended glaze. For those of you unfamiliar with glazes, glazes are a clear medium that allow you to put a transparent layer of color on top of your surface. I'm going to open up my Translucide and show you what it looks like. You'll notice it's thick and creamy and clear, clearish whitish. Now it's clear because you're actually going to tint this yourself, which is pretty cool because you can make it whatever color you want. You can make it red, purple, white, brown, and you can tint this with whatever you like as long as it's water-based. If you've got an old can of paint that's just sitting in your garage that you'll never use, you can use that to tint it with. You can use our water-based organza to tint it with just to give it a little sparkle. You can use these little artist acrylics in tubes to tint with. Or you can use these cheap little craft paints from the hobby store, as long as it's water-based. Okay, now I'm going to show you how to tint. Generally, you're going to follow a recipe of about five parts of the translucid to one part of your water-based paint. Today we're going to use Maison Blanche Vintage Furniture Paint and Coffee Bean, which is a really nice espresso color. And take my spoon and scoop up just a little. And mix it up. Now the more paint that you put in this, the quicker that this is going to ultimately dry. The less you put on, the more open time that you have. So that's something to consider as you're tinting it. If you want it darker at this point, you can just add more paint. If you need it to be lighter, just add some more of this. Okay, now I'm going to spice things up a bit by adding some organza and oil rubbed bronze, just for a hint of sparkle. Okay, now we're ready to glaze. Okay, the first technique I'm going to teach you is the brushed glaze technique. I've got a piece that's already been painted with baguette vintage furniture paint. It's sitting on some painter's points. I don't know if you guys know about these, but they're awesome so you don't mess up your tables. You can get them at your local hardware store. All right. Now, the biggest mistake that people make when they're glazing is that they put too much glaze onto the surface. A little bit goes a long way. I'm just going to brush it on. And I can still see my baguette underneath, but it's just warming it up. It's adding some color. For those of you guys who are just bored with paint and wax, this is something else you might consider because it's a lot more durable this way. Now let's say that you accidentally got too much on. You really wanted it darker and so you put too much. That's way too much, it's gonna drip off. It's not a big deal. You just take a soft cloth or a rag and just wipe it off. You've really got a lot of open time here. So it's okay and it's just paint. If you don't like it, you can always repaint over it. I'm then gonna use a chip brush and just drag my brush right through the surface to create a nice pattern. This is super easy. All right, I'm gonna let this dry. All right, it's all dry. For those of you who are familiar with using glazes, you're probably wondering what's different about this glaze. One of the main differences is that it dries to a flat finish. All other glazes are shiny when they dry, so this is very, very flat and matte. 
Another difference is that this glaze can go on top of a porous surface such as our vintage furniture paint. It'll go on top of flat paint, satin paint, high gloss paint. The shinier your surface, the more it's going to move around. But you can definitely use it on top of our vintage chalky furniture paint. All right, I'm going to go ahead and varnish this for maximum durability. Maison Blanche Paint Company has two types of varnishes, a satin and a matte. I'm going to use satin varnish on this. With our varnishes, you're going to put two very thin layers. I'm using a purdy brush because I want a nice smooth finish to my varnish. This technique is great for tabletops, things that are going to get a lot of wear and tear. I'm going to let this dry and then put on another coat. Okay, now I'm going to be showing you the blended glaze technique. I'm actually going to be painting a piece of plastic. This plastic has been painted already with our baguette, same as the piece we just did. This time I'm going to use my glazing brush, Red Hot Ruby. This is one of my most loved tools. Isn't she pretty? The reason that I'm doing this on a vertical surface is because I wanted you to see that you can do this on walls or on furniture. If you, your kitchen's already painted with latex paint, you can absolutely do this technique in your kitchen, in your, in your bat bedroom, you can do it in your dining room. You can use this technique anywhere in your home as long as it's painted with latex paint, water-based paint, not an oil-based paint. So I've got some of the same glaze that we just used and I'm going to take a little brush and I'm going to apply it to my surface. Now these brushes are fine if you're doing a small piece of furniture but on walls you're going to want to use five gallon buckets with little six inch rollers in them because it would be crazy to do the whole wall with a, a chip brush this size. So I'm just applying it kind of randomly. You can always take some off if it's too much, but you do not want to apply this to your whole entire surface. It'll drip off. All right, now I'm going to use some of this clear translucid. And I'm just going to apply a little bit in my open areas. This is to give us an antique aged plaster look. We want it to be kind of cloudy looking. Now I'm going to take Ruby and I'm going to scrub. Act like you're working at the car wash. So I start off with a lot of pressure to move the glaze around. And then as I finish, I'm using just very light pressure almost to buff it and give us that nice cloudy look. Now don't worry if you screw up, it's just paint, you can wipe it off. See that, how it just comes right off. So if you've got too much, just dab it off. I love the way that this looks. I'm gonna pull a little bit of tape so you can see it against the white plastic. I've used this technique in so many homes. I've done so many walls just the same way and it's so elegant.
All right, now we're gonna let it dry. All right, our glaze is all dry. I wanna show you the before and after. You can see that the baguette is still apparent, but it's just slightly warmed up and looks really nice. You can do this on walls, you can do it on tables. You do not need to put varnish on this unless it's something that's gonna get a whole lot of wear and tear. So on walls, I generally don't put a varnish on top. Now I wanna show you some photos of some rooms that I've done using this exact technique. Here's a photo of a kitchen island that I painted using the blended glaze method. Here's another one. Look at the back wall. I glazed the walls using the same exact technique. In this photo, the cabinets were glazed and so was the ceiling. Here's an action shot of blended glaze in action. That's my husband on the right and my friend Michelle on the left. And now another action shot. One of my workers using the blended glaze method. This one's tinted really dark. You can really get a dramatic effect that way. Here's a room that was first painted a pale green and then glazed with a subtle chocolate color. So I showed you the blended glaze technique. Now back to the brushed glaze technique. Our varnish is all dry and your furniture piece is now ready to use. I hope that you love our translucid as much as I do. Please check out our other videos and let us know what you think. We'd also love it if you would share your own photos on our Facebook page so that we can enjoy them as well. I'm Annie Omar and I'll see you next time.